Alright, what is up YouTube? Jane Speck here. Welcome back to another episode of VGC 2018 Backtrack Battles. Today, we have a brand new team. And this team, we got Mega Aerodactyl on deck with Zerkatry, Porygon Z, Gastrodon, Tapabulu, and Incineroar. So, there are two backstories to this team. One, there was a QR code on Battle Spot. It's pretty popular. It has Mega Aerodactyl, Porygon Z, Gastrodon, as well as had... Uh, Scrafty, Celesteela, and can't remember the last Pokemon, but you get my point. So there was that team as well as another team recently that's been surging up, especially I believe it was, I can't remember the exact region, I think it was Taiwan. Don't correct me, it's Taiwan, I think. With Mega Aerodactyl, Tapu Fini, Incineroar, Landis Varian, Zerkatry, and Barathorn. So, Mega Aerodactyl has been surging. It took four out of the top eight placements in that one open. So, it's pretty interesting. It also won the open, too. So, been wanting to try out uh, Aerodactyl with setup. So, originally, I was going to use the Porygon Z, and then I thought... At the beginning of the format, actually, uh, there was this team I was going to use, like, in early VGC 18 back to battles. It had a Dragonite. It was AB Dragonite with Zerkatry, Bulu, and Scrafty, and they involved Intimidate and s setting up for my Zerkatry. Didn't really like it too much. The Dragonite was too slow to Skydrop important mons, but since we're using Aerodactyl with Porygon Z with Skydrop, and we have a Tailwind option, I'm thinking, you know what, let's try to revive that team and see how it goes. So we're bringing Bulu and Incineroar again from the last team and yeah we're gonna be trying out the Porygon Z, Zerkatry, and Aerodactyl three Pokemon that I really haven't used on the series no I don't think I ever used them on the series maybe did I use Zerkatry once I don't think I did I'm pretty sure I didn't we got Quinn from Canada as our first opponent of the day with the team of Latias, Landis Varian Incineroar, Kartana, Tapufini, and Gengar. If I remember, isn't this the team that won Stugart Regionals, or am I thinking of a different team? Well, we got a Mega Aerodactyl here, so that should be interesting. I do like my Porygon Z in this matchup. I think Porygon Z is really solid here if I set it up right. Yeah, I really like my Porygon Z in this matchup, especially since I can pretty much KO everything except the Fini. And the Incineroar, but I could always check the Incineroar with my Aerodactyl. And I have other stuff too. So I think I'm going to go Aerodactyl, Porygon Z, Incineroar in the back. And I think I'm going to have my Zerkatry. Because I think Zerkatry can put in a ton of work against my opponent's team. Uh, if I need a backup sweeper. Like Kartana. Kartana is easily checked. Yeah, I think this, this is going to work. Pretty sure. I think the lead I think I would be most scared of would be something like Latias Kartana because the Tailwind option I guess could be a little bit annoying to handle. If I just get one Sky Drop though, I feel pretty gold about my position. So let's see how this is gonna go. As this Sky Drop combo, really excited to use. Actually, I forgot. No, we'll find out during the battle because I don't remember. Exactly, if I had Porygon Z and Aerodact, like Porygon Z at plus one under speed my Aerodactyl, because it's supposed to for the Sky Draw combination. But I made this Aerodactyl EV spread recently after the other t on a different team, so I don't remember. But we'll see here. Incineroar Gengar is actually gonna leave, which is not bad at all. That's not bad for me at all. Aerodactyl Porygon Z will take the field, get that unnerve. Intimidate is going to fire off, and yeah, this should be interesting. I don't know what kind of options my opponent really has here. Don't know if you're going to fake out the Porygon Z or not. There are a bunch of options. If I want to switch, I can switch now. I could go out into my Incineroar, potentially. I just don't know who you would fake out. You could fake out the Porygon Z, but I'd be able to Sky Drop in Retaliation. So I don't know if you really want to do that. I don't know if I want to set up either. So I think I'll go for... Double protect and scout, I guess. Yeah, I'll double protect the scout, I think. Let's see. So Gengar is going to Mega Evolve here. If I really need to, I could always... If it is like a Perish variant of this team, I could always like Conversion 
so I can actually get the ghost typing and then switch out without having to use my Z move, which is actually pretty sick. So let's see what my opponent has. I have no idea what's going to be coming out here. Will be the fake out coming out into Aerodactyl and a Icy Wind coming out. So that's pretty significant here as... I wonder how much Flare Blitz from Incineroar would do. I'm not really too worried about Gengar. I could just go for the Shadow Ball in the Gengar and Sky Drop the Incineroar. Which I don't think is a bad play because I'm pretty sure Shadow Ball should knock out uh, Gengar. Let me just see something. 140... I'm pretty sure I would outspeed. Yeah, so I'm gonna actually sky drop the Incineroar here and go for a Shadow Ball into the Gengar. Because I'm not really too worried about Icy Wind, and I don't have to set up right away. So we're gonna actually see Incineroar withdraw here into Kartana. Alright. So Kartana is coming out, which is a scary Pokemon to deal with. That's not what I was anticipating at all, but it could be potentially an Icy Wind here. And I really hope it's an Icy Wind because I'd be able to break out of this trap that my opponent's got me in right now. So let's see what my opponent is going to do. So I will Sky Drop the Kartana and take it up into the sky and we do see another Icy Wind. So that's not really going to do too much to Porygon Z. And since I didn't set up, I don't have to worry about me wasting like the speed potential that I have on my Z move. So let us see Shadow Ball into the Gengar. I hope this picks up the knockout. Oh, that wasn't even close. That really wasn't even close at all. <laughs> uh, that's a little awkward. Hmm. Porygon Z can win, but do I need to... Do I need it exactly? I don't think I need it exactly 100%. I think... Like, you could be tying down my Aerodactyl, which is the big thing here. Hmm, I could protect Porygon Z, or I could go on the offense. I think I'm just going to protect and see what my opponent does here. This Gengar's going to retreat, which is actually... That's ideal for me, I think. Because Incineroar is going to come in, I don't mind. Even if you knock out my Aerodactyl, I don't think it's too bad here. I could, but if my opponent doesn't target down to Porygon Z, I could have just went for an Ice Beam there. So, that's a little bit unfortunate. Because let's see what's going to come out. Sky Drop. And a Bloom Doom? I think that's the only way you can knock out one of my, my Aerodactyl. Oh, wait, what? Did Cartana try to go for Detect or is it Scarf? It might be Scarf at this point. If I went for like a play like that, okay. I think I can just protect and now get out my own Incineroar because even though I could be eating a Sacred Sword from this Kartana, not exactly too sure, but I don't want to risk Smart Strike into my Aerodactyl. So I'll go Incineroar here, get the Intimidate off into the Incineroar and Kartana, but let's see what my opponent is going to do here. I do want Fake Out Pressure and I could go for like some damage or I could double out. There are a few things I could do. Fake Out going to come out into the Porygon and a Leap Blade going to come out into the Porygon as well. Okay. So really not doing too much damage there, which I really like. And now I can get a Tailwind up. You can't knock out Incineroar unless you have Phytium set. I could see... Huh. I think I just want to go for a Flare Blitz in the Kartana. Yeah, I'll go for Flare Blitz in the Kartana. As Kartana's going to switch out, but I get damage on whatever comes in. Feeny, I'm not really too worried about. So that's fine by me. As Feeny is going to come out, I could always Sky Drop and maybe get like a Tail... Or I could just... Oh, there's actually a few plays I can make. Depends on what my opponent does here. Maybe a U-turn coming out from the Incineroar, which would make a lot of sense, but it's knockoff into my Incineroar slot. So getting rid of my Barry, not too big of a deal. I guess it could make Artana a little bit more annoying in the end game, but we will go for a Flare Blitz right here. It will target down the Tapu Fini. And that damage might be important with the Sky Drop from my Aerodactyl. It's Leftovers Fini, huh? Okay. But I think that's all right. I can go for a Sky Drop into the... Feeny here, and I think I can go out in my Zerkatry, and Zerkatry can start having some fun. Since I do trap the Feeny in, I will be able to get a Thunderbolt off, and I would just... I don't know if Thunderbolt will be able to knock out the Feeny, but I'm hoping it will after the Sky Drop, as we're going to see the switch out from the Incineroar back into Kartana. Alright. 
So I wonder where the Z move is. It's potentially... Ooh, Feeny protects. That works too. Okay. That works too. Hmm. That position got a little bit weird, but I don't think it's too bad at all. How many turns of Tailwind do I have left? Two. I could Sky Drop to Cartana and Tail Glow if I want to. Because I don't know if Feeny wants to stay in. I could see Incineroar coming back in. I think I'm going to Tail Glow here. Since Leftovers Feeny, I doubt it can 2 KO my Zerkatree, as we are going to see the swap in Incineroar. If Cartana protects, I got my free Tail Glow off, and I could always switch into my Incineroar the following turn from my Aerodactyl and protect with my Zerkatree, so I don't feel like I'm losing too much here as... Yep. That's all right. So I will be able to sky drop and get a tail glow off. All right, so not too bad. Although I haven't really gotten to do much. Ooh, I'm running out of time too. I will just protect my Zerkatry here because the worst case is I take a Bloom Doom here. I guess you could, I could lose my Aerodactyl here, but I don't think I mind losing Aerodactyl. As I said, I'd get a free switch into my Incineroar, but I've been taking a lot of time. I didn't realize how long I was taking. But yeah, as long as I get my, Incin my own Incineroar into a good position, I think I'm good against my opponent's team. Yeah, I should be good. So let's see what my opponent does. Could be fake out into Bloom Doom. It might be just an attack. Maybe a Tailwind even, but I don't think I'd mind Tailwind too much. But let's see what my opponent goes for, as I will go for the Sky Drop here in the Cartana. Get a good amount. And Smart Strike. So this one carries Smart Strike, which is interesting. Knocks out my Aerodactyl again. I didn't mind Aerodactyl going down. Smart Strike usually confirms Scarf Cartana. I wonder if it is Scarf Cartana. I will get in my Incineroar here. Yeah, I'll get in my Incineroar here, and I think I'll go for what? Fake Out Gleam? Or I could double out my Incineroar out. <laughs> there are a few plays I can make. I think I want to actually double out my Incineroar here into Porygon, so maybe I could get the conversion off. Did we ever see Protect from Cartana? I do not remember. Oh, well, I think I'm going to go for Gleam anyway. I need to weaken the Incineroar for my Porygon anyway. No switch outs for my opponent. So I will get my Porygon in. Let's see what my opponent goes for here. Going to be the Smart Strike, so I think it is... Yeah, it has to be Scarf. Why are you going for Smart Strike in the Zergatry otherwise, in my opinion? So, Dazzling Gleam going to come out. We'll be able to... Not finish off the Cartana, but I think that's okay here as Flare Blitz going to come out and target down my Zerkatree. That should proc Barry, I think. Or not, but I don't think Smart Strike will knock me out either. So this is actually probably the most ideal position I could get, for, get into. Because now I can go for my Z conversion right here. And getting that Z conversion is absolutely huge, and I can go for a Gleam here. So I'm going to be able to get a knockout onto Cartana. And potentially the Incineroar. I don't remember the Gleam damage specifically, but I think it might be enough. Right here, if you're locked into Smart Strike and you attack my Zerkatry, you're going to basically proc my Barry. Or if you go for knockoff in the Zerkatry, that's still not going to knock me out. And I basically get to keep Porygon Z alive and I get my uh, boost. So no matter what, I feel like I'm in an okay spot here. As Cartana is going to retreat here, which is alright, as Gengar is going to come in. So we'll get a Gleam off into the Zerkatry. I mean, a Gleam into the Gengar and Incineroar combination. And then it's, what, Feeny, Cartana in the back. And I don't think Cartana can touch my Porygon Z at all. So I think I could just protect Shadow Ball. This Gleam will come out. Does this knock out Incineroar? I forgot the damage. It does, yeah. Oh, I got a crit. I don't know if that mattered. Because the Flare Blitz Recoil wasn't too much... I don't remember. I don't remember the Incineroar took damage before the Flare Blitz Recoil plus the Last Gleam, but I'll take it. I get a Beast Boost and plus 5 Zerkatry on deck. Plus 5 Zerkatry on deck. Feeny is going to come out. And at this point, I think I just win the game with my Incineroar. Plus Zerkatry. Because Cortana can come in. It should be... I think it's in range of Fake Out. Doesn't matter. You have to lock. You have to lock yourself in the Leaf Blade at this point. I think you have to the Leaf Blade crit my Porygon Z, and even then, I think I can still be in this game. So I'll go for a Shadow Ball here, and I'll go for a Protect. 
yeah. If you're Scar Cartana, we confirm it now. And if you're not Scar Cartana, I think you just lose the game right here. So, let's see what my opponent does here. Because it has to be Scarf, right? Scarf is probably the only set that carries Smart Strike. And why would you Smart Strike a Zerkatry if you weren't Scarf? So, protect here. Unless you're bluffing the Scarf. Yeah, knock off. That's not going to KO Porygon. Yeah. Because I will be able to get a Shadow Ball. Finish off the Cartana. Unless this is like a Choice... No, it can't be Choice Scarfini. It's Choice Scar Cartana guaranteed. So we knock out the Cartana here. And Moonblast is going to come out. Target down my Porygon yet. I just win the game with my Timid Zerkatry. So, Porygon going to faint here. Unless this is Timid Feeny. I don't think it would be Timid Feeny. I guess that would be the only way. And if you're Timid Feeny, I don't know if you knock out Zerkatry. If you're Max Special Attack or not. If you're Timid Max Special Attack. But... Pretty sure that I should have to win with my Zerkatry. Come on, Zerkatry is going to get plus 6. Zerkatry is going to get to plus 6. So I'll fake out Thunderbolt. Should I just Tail Glow? Nah, just Thunderbolt. No reason to style right here. As Protect. And yeah, Muddy Water wouldn't knock out the Zerkatry anyway. And I could go for Knock Off into Thunderbolt. So yeah, that will be game. Unless, again, it is Timid Feeny. We'll find out. But I'm assuming it's not. Yep, Zerkatry going to be faster on top of Feeny. We'll be able to get a Thunderbolt off, and that would be good game to my opponent. So, yeah, quite slow. I didn't exactly get to do everything I wanted. Like, it, my opponent didn't get me into that position where I re really got to set up for free. But once Zerkatry was able to come in, and get a tail glow up it was just able to start throwing off all that damage with the spread dazzling gleam which was really important damage i didn't get to knock out the gengar which really caught me by surprise but i still wouldn't have z conversion in that position anyway i guess what i could have done was maybe go for a shadow ball potentially into the cartana that one turn but yeah i'm really surprised shadow ball doesn't knock out i mean i am like i think i'm near mo near max modest with my porygon so, yeah. I don't know. I, I, actually, it's funny because I use this Porygon Z in uh, singles. So, <laughs> yeah, might not be the best case. The EV spread is like modest. It has a little bit of bulk. I don't remember what it really does because this is my single spread. <laughs> so, um,. But yeah, Porygon Z able to do some work. So did Zerkatry. Really happy. The offensive Sky Drop was pretty helpful too. It just created a bit of pressure and gave, and bought me some turns. Of course, the awkward thing about Sky Drop is if you're threatened by a Pokemon, even when they're being Sky Dropped, as you saw, like uh, Kartana could have threatened Zerkatry if it was a Z move set. Like it could have put me in an awkward position, and then it put me put myself in a position where I might be sacking one of my Pokemon instead of getting myself into that decent position and getting knockouts like I want to. So Sky Drop's always a little bit of a risky move, but it can have some really good benefits and rewards. On the other side, it can also lead to your downfall because uh, you can't really make a protective switch in if you're using Sky Drop in the offensive like setup mon so you can't really switch out that aerodactyl to get like intimidate or something so it can be a two-sided sword anyway it can buy turns but i feel like it has to be used cautiously or you're willing to uh, sacrifice the sky drop user in return and of course mega aerodactyl isn't the bulkiest pokemon in the world so i think it's all right in case i in case i do need it so yeah that's basically what i think but otherwise i think we're gonna move on to the second game of today's episode we'll be right back with that second game we got genie from japan 1646 rating as our second opponent with the team oh boy okay we got metagross tyranitar amoongus top of the lilac lambdas fairing and zapdos so zapdos is gonna be a weird one so is amoongus amoongus is a really scary one amoongus is definitely one of the scary ones and if this metagross has that headbutt we could be Looking for some trouble. So what do I exactly like here? I don't really like Zerkatry. I do like my Aerodactyl Porygon Z mode. I do like Incineroar. Do I like Bulu? I think Bulu can cover the Pokemon that I can't touch with my Porygon. Such as the Tyranitar specifically. 
yeah, basically it's just Time Raptor. So, Aerodactyl Porygon Z, I think, is going to be my lead. I think it's the most solid lead where I can get a setup with, like, Tailwind or something. Have Incineroar on top of Bulu in the back. We'll find out how this works. But, yeah, this could be a really tough matchup depending on what my opponent brings. I think you do bring the Metagross, and it really comes down to what sets you have, specifically on the Metagross and Lele combination, because the Lele... Psychic Terrain plus the Metagross is Sky Drop. I don't think Metagross can be Sky Dropped. I think Metagross is too heavy if I remember correctly. I haven't really Sky Dropped a Mega Metagross too much, so uh, forgive me if it is able to Sky Drop. I'll probably look it up in between episodes, but yes, we'll find out here. So, I'm pretty sure it's too heavy though, unless it was like Light Metal. <laughs> So let's see what my opponent is going to opt for as a lead. There are a lot of potential leads that could stop me. I think Amoongus Metagross would be fine for my opponent. Could be Lele Metagross for offense, but I think I could be... I think I could maneuver against that. So let's see what my opponent goes for. It's going to be the Zapdos plus the Metagross. Okay. I kind of just want to go for a, like get a nerve. Man, I wish I actually know if I, I knew if I could sky drop Metagross because I would sky drop it right now. I would sky drop it right now. Is there a safe play? Not really, because if it's Z moves Zapdos, I guess that could be an issue. I think I'll match Tailwind to my opponent goes for Tailwind because there are two plays, a Gigabolt Havoc into Iron Head from this Metagross. Another play could be a Lele Switch, but I'm not sure if you would go for that right away. Or another play is you Tailwind and Iron Head. I think I'm going to try the Z conversion up though. Yeah, I'm going to try the Z conversion up. I think it's an alright play turn one. Could be risking a lot here, but we're going to see the Zapdos switch out, which is actually pretty ideal here. Out comes the Amoongus, so this is looking pretty decent here. Depending on what the Metagross does, but Metagross can't knock me out, which is pretty huge. So as I'm trying to charge my thing, okay, there we go. All right, Metagross is gonna Mega Evolve. I'm glad I didn't go for the Rock Side turn. Well, actually, Rock Side the damage would have been better, I think. But let's see what my opponent does here. As I will Tailwind up, hopefully, be Iron Head to Aerodactyl. That's all right. Iron Head comes out. Into Aerodactyl. Okay, that actually works, because I get the free Z conversion off. So that really works out for me, as I will be able to get the Ghost Z conversion off. And that's pretty big, because Ghost Z is going to hurt my opponent's team a lot. My opponent really doesn't have much for it. So, Ghost Z conversion. I wonder what the back Pokemon is, though. That's going to be a question. Is it Lele, potentially? The only thing I'm worried about is a Lele. Hmm. If it's Lele, I guess it, I could be... No, if it's Lele... Okay, the problem with Lele is if Metagross switches out into Lele and Amoongus goes for a... Clear Smog slash Spore into Porygon. But I think the best play regardless is just to go f attempt to get a Fake Out Shadow Ball combination off right here. Because one, I'd get a knockout on either the Lele, or I'd be able to knock out the Met Metagross here if you don't double protect. And if you double protect, I just double up the Amoongus while your Metagross can't do much to my team. So I'd be okay with that. Let's see what my opponent's going to go for, though. So I still don't know where the Z-Move is. If there is a Z-Move on this team, because I think this team could be viable. I think Lele would carry the Z-Move, though. But I wonder what the Zapdos would be, if it's a Berry or if it is a potential Z-Move. And it could be like a Life Orb Lele, for instance. No clue. Yet, I think this is going to be the best play I can make. As I think it's just a Double Protect, which works out for me. Okay. So Double Protect here. I think I'll double up the Amoongus, because you're most likely going to Rage Powder anyway. Or I could see you maybe uh, switching out into your Zapdos potentially and try to attempt a Spore. Or if you have Landris potentially, you could try to get in Landris on the Shadow Ball in order to get a Clear Smog or Spore off. So I think I'll just shot, double up the, the Amoongus slot. That's weird. Okay. <laughs> Something uh, 
or my chair fell, and I have, like, no idea what it is. I think it's just, like, a part. But anyway, I think I'll just go for Shadow Ball Flare Blitz, because I will be able to knock out the Amoongus here. And if I knock out Amoongus, that means Porygon Z is pretty good. The Metagross is Intimidated, so I'm not really too worried about it. And getting rid of Amoongus is probably the biggest threat that can uh, knock out my Porygon Z right here. Or stop my Porygon Z from really wreaking havoc on my opponent's team. So I'll go for that play. No matter what, I feel like I'm in this pretty solid position otherwise. There's only one possible play, and I'm really hoping my opponent doesn't go for it, and that's an Iron Head into my uh, center. But it looks like I'm going to stay in. So I do get a Shadow Ball off. Stomping Tantrum's going to come out, but again, it's not going to do too much here. It is minus one. Not even a two a KO, as I will get a Flare Blitz off and knock out the Amoongus. Shadow Ball might have just put it out of barrier range, which is nice, so I don't have to take the recoil. Of course, I would have knocked out Amoongus even if it got a barrier back, I think, at that point. But that's still pretty nice as, yeah. So I think my opponent was like, okay, I either get the damage off onto Incineroar, or because if you double up Amoongus, I get that damage off, or potentially what my opponent was thinking, okay, if you go for that play that you just did, if you go for Shadow Ball into Metagross, if Incineroar doesn't knock out my Amoongus, I get a Spore Clear Smog off. So I think that's both my opponent's options right there. But, yeah, this is looking pretty alright for me. I think I can knock off the Zapdos and go for a Shadow Ball here. At this point. I do have Tailwind up. I could double into Zapdos, potentially. Although, I could see Tailwind going up for the Zapdos. And maybe Metagross going for a switch out into a more offensive threat here. Oh, if it's Tyranitar, I guess I could be in a really bad spot. But if you had Tyranitar, I feel like you would have brought it out uh, last turn. Because if you had Tyranitar, I feel like you would have brought it out the last turn. Because it took the Shadow Ball and uh, would have been a in a decent position, I guess. We are going to see the Metagross withdraw into the Lele. Perfect. Okay. So that's pretty ideal here because I will be able to knock out Lele. And I get to find out what the Zapdos' item is. If it's Seed, if it's Berry, or Z-Move. It's not Seed, so I do get the knockout on Lele here. I'm guessing you're going to go for a Tailwind here. I don't see a reason why you would make this play unless you're going for a Tailwind here. Are you Roar? Oh, no, no, I had Tailwind up. <laughs> I was so worried for a second. Okay, Tailwind does go up as I anticipated. So this works out because now I can bring out my Bulu. Bulu is in a really solid position. And I can sack... Well, I'm probably not going to be sacking my Bulu because of the fact that I don't think my opponent's going to double up Incineroar with like a Heat Wave combination. But I'm going to get rid of Psychic Terrain. Then I can get an Intimidate back onto this Metagross. And then I could be in a really solid position. So Porygon Z putting in some work here as we'll get in my Bulu. And Bulu should have... Well, Bulu was just important to get rid of this Terrain as well as cover the Tyranitar that could have been potentially troublesome. So let's see what my opponent goes for as I will switch out my Incineroar. Into my Bulu, which is definitely the safest play. Don't think my opponent can really cover this unless you have like some kind of setup move. I think that's protects. Interesting. Not gonna go for the offensive Zen headbutt, looks like. What is the Zapdos going for? Did we knock off an item? I think if we did confirm it with Z move Zapdos. Did we? How much did knock off do? Oh no no no, we knocked off an item for sure. We knocked off an item for sure. I, I guess I wasn't paying attention. I'm going to go in Incineroar here. And just fire off a Shadow Ball into Metagross. Because Metagross is really the only threatening thing that's threatening my Porygon Z at this point. Zapdos with Roost won't be doing too much damage to my team. Although I could double target the Zapdos. The problem is I just don't want to get flinched by this Metagross potentially. So let's see what my opponent goes for. Here comes the Iron Head. Going to target down the Porygon. As we will see a Thunderbolt double up. Let's see. I do flinch here. Huh. I think I'll just Flare Blitz the... Flare Blitz the Zapdos slot and protect my Porygon Z here. Yeah, I think I'll make that play. The reason I'm going to make this play is, yes, I could go for Fake Out, for instance, but the problem with going for Fake Out is, I just don't know if the other will KO. So I'd rather go for Flare Blitz here. The reason I go for Flare Blitz is I put Zapdos in range of an Ice Beam or Shadow Ball. I think Shadow Ball... 
Let me see, Shadow Ball times two because of adaptability. I think Ice Beam actually does more because of super effectiveness. But I could be wrong. But I will go for Flare Abyss. And if we double up my Incineroar, Stomping Tantrum should proc my Barry anyway, as we see an Iron Head there. Okay, perfect. And a Thunderbolt into the Porygon. So doubling out the Porygon, excellent. So I will be able to get the Flare Blitz off into the Lapdos Law. I think my opponent was probably thinking, oh wow, that did so much damage. It's a crit, that's why. It is a crit. Unfortunately, it did not proc my berry. Sailing does peter out, okay. And that works, because I should live a Metagross attack with my Porygon Z. I can go for sh uh, Flare Blitz into Metagross and Shadow Ball to Zapdos. Since the Zapdos revealed Roost plus the Tailwind, I doubt it carries Protect. But I can just get a Shadow Ball off into the Zapdos slot, pick up the Knockout, and then... Even a Metagross, let's say, crits my Porygon Z right here. Flare Blitz puts me in my berry range with Incineroar and puts the Metagross in range of my Grassy Terrain Woodhammer. So, down goes the Zapdos. We will see an Iron Head once again coming out into the Porygon Z, which doesn't pick up the knockout thanks to that Grassy Terrain. So, very clutch Porygon Z. Flare Blitz going to come out into the Metagross, doing a ton of damage. Almost picks up the knockout. Not quite enough, though, but we will be able to proc my berry. And that would be a good game because Porygon Z now outspeeds the Metagross and will be able to win the game. So, really nice, really nice stuff here, I think, for my Porygon Z. Porygon Z putting in some work. I like it. Porygon Z, that Z conversion. Mega Aerodactyl, not really doing too much. I mean, just getting the Tailwind up was really nice in general, turn one. But yeah, Aerodactyl is more of a setup option. It's pretty fail, so it will probably go down pretty quickly. And. Yeah, but even if it goes down quickly, as long as it gets the pressure with like Sky Drop and Tailwind, if it gets its job done, the Porygon Z that I do have, or the Bulu, or the Zerkatry can all set up to sweep my opponent. And that's basically what I go for with this team, since I don't really try to, you know, take advantage of like Mega Aerodactyl's non existent bulk. I mean, I could invest in a bulky Aerodactyl, but at that point, I just don't feel like it would be that worth it i feel like i'd rather use a different bulky sky drop pokemon maybe like the zapdos on my opponent's side for instance but yeah otherwise thank you all for tuning in today's episode of vgc 2018 battles we got two wins with this team if you did like it please leave a like down below share some support as well as you can check out the rest of my stuff down below in the description such as my social medias the side series on my channel the extra content that i do the previous episodes of vgc 2018 back to battles if you have missed them and of course you can check out the placement of this team down below if you do want to go try it out otherwise feel free to leave a comment as i do read them i might not reply to them all the time but yep and also the fact that my ultra what was it ultra kalos i think ultra kalos cup matches should be uploading on youtube should be throughout this week so if you want to go check that out feel free to i'll link in the description down below but yeah thank you all for tuning in have a great day people and until we battle again i'll catch y'all later